Tonight's going to be a fun night. I hope you came ready to, to mourn the loss of the one that we love and ready to celebrate the things that were great about Clay and the things we love. So the family got together, the brothers and sister this week, and we got out all the picture books. And so we wanted to share those with you today. So what's going to happen is we're having a video narrated of a picture book of Clay's life. So join me as we watch this together. Is Paul Pettifer, and on behalf of my brothers and sister and, and our family, we're welcoming you today to the memorial service for Clay Pettifer. And as you see these pictures rolling across the screen, uh, I don't know about you, but smiles are hitting my heart. Daddy's smile as he was a boy was so good, and uh, those eyes of his just gleam forward. So those of you who knew Clay, you can look and see in these pictures his dazzling, unbelievable blue eyes. As a young man, as a soldier, um, dad. So today we're going to celebrate uh, Clay's life. I I've done a lot of crying in the last few days, but right now I'm just smiling. And uh, the picture before you there, those are the oldest boat pictures that we have. Uh, that's what Jerry said, so he's a pretty good authority on such things. And, and our dad, he was a phenomenal guy. He raced boats. He was a poor fella. He worked at city service and made uh, 40 bucks a week or something like that. And he had this interest in boats. And so he went into boat racing. And that picture of uh, that smile up close, that's priceless. So dad ran the L86 Clay Pettifer from Lake Charles, Louisiana. This was all before my time, of course. And dad was a, just a terrific mechanic. He was very crafty. He worked hard, he tuned his boat, he figured out how to drive it and set it up so he would win. And He would outrun fellas who had a lot more money to spend on their rig. Uh, and Dad worked at City Service, and that's the magazine for City Service, the facts, fastest hunk of junk in the world. And uh, there's Dad with his world championship trophies right here from Lake Charles. His backup boat was the 186, and Dad just practiced this determination and ingenuity to uh, to make things happen and to smile in it and, and uh, I didn't hear I wasn't at the boat races but I heard about them that they were a lot of fun I believe daddy went in the water uh, 50 times that he uh, he started over 500 races um, he went to over a hundred events he won three national championships he was poised to win a fourth in Minneapolis Minnesota in a few minutes we'll have a picture of it where he um, he crashed I think um, he'd spent over a month in various hospitals or maybe it was a couple of months and uh, this picture right here is in Minneapolis where he had a spectacular crash and flipped 13 times in the air it was on the the television news that night um, about this this Cajun who uh, went fast and his boat uh, prop walked and he hit a wave going 60 something miles an hour sideways and it catapulted him into the air. Those were his trophies at his house on Circle Street. So boat racing was fun. It was uh, part of his, uh, his lifestyle at that time. They just had such a good time going everywhere and it led him to be in the boat business. So he opened up Clay's Specialty Service out on Shell Beach Drive by the pier and then later Clay's Marine out on Common Street, him and Mama. Look at that awesome couple. Um, I love my mom and dad, all of us do, and look at them right there. That's, dad went to a lot of, um, mom and dad went to a lot of dealer uh, award ceremonies. He was in, in the dealer congress, the first dealer congress for Mercury Outboard Motors, and that's dad on one of his trips. And uh, that's kind of where I grew up, it feels like, at the shop. That's what we called it, Clay's Marine at Common Street. And um, my dad was just, he was a really, um, personable man and he made tons of friends and that was at his desk in his office with that that phone behind him there was a couch there and daddy would take a 20 minute cat nap and uh, there's him holding his two plaques we didn't get the third plaque for his world championship but we got that one and it was just incredibly fun to celebrate that's dad winning another award um, and that smile that's that's awesome. But dad wasn't all business. He had a family. Uh, Mom and dad, actually, they had three children. 
that uh, died as newborns before Jerry. That's a picture of Bubba right there. I thought Bubba's name was Bubba until I was about nine or ten, but his name is Jerry. And um, my oldest brother, he's an awesome guy. And uh, Dad had a lot of smiles and horn rim glasses, and we went for boat rides as kids. And um, there's this Christmas morning with Eva and a Barbie doll, and uh, those are the three older children, Jerry and Donnie and Eva, on one of our family vacations. It might have been a boat trip. And uh, a regular ritual was to have birthday parties at Clay's Marine for all of the family and the crew. So we did that regularly. That picture was Eva, and here's the whole family, including the first grandchild, Daryl. And uh, smiles were plentiful in our house. I mean, there wasn't all, they had trouble from time to time, but there was lots of smiles. That looks like some Thompson children right there, if I had to guess. And um, so life in our home was, was, was fun for me. And uh, that's me and my younger brother Bill on a Christmas morning. And uh, our dad, pajamas and all. Paw Paw, that's what he was called by all the grandkids. What a great looking family. The guy on the left, he's the best looking, of course. Aha, that's me. And, uh, those two pictures are at Eva's house, it looks like. And, uh, there's, there's a Jamie Ashley. Or, no, yeah, Jamie Ashley. Smiling Papa on his couch. This one's a little bit later in life, about six years ago, I think. Eva's family. Dad was in the Army Air Corps. He volunteered. I think he tried to volunteer too young and they wouldn't let him, so he went back. And about six years ago or so, maybe eight years ago, a B-17 came to town and a B-24 Liberator. Daddy was um, a navigator trainee on a crew of a B-17 and he, um, he flew in training and Victory in Europe Day happened before he graduated, so he didn't have to go to be deployed to Europe. But he flew that bird, and so it was a remarkable day to go out there. That's vintage clay, man. Gray jumpsuit, pen in hand, notepad in his pocket. What a great looking guy. So he flew that plane. He would tell me about shooting it when we were in the duck blind. About those 50 caliber guns, that was that first picture. There's some more family photos. That's my family there. My girls. My wedding day. Look at my mama, isn't she beautiful? That's our backyard at uh, Dean Street. We lived on Contraband Bayou. And um, that was my high school graduation, I think. That's an awesome picture of that bird, the 17 that daddy flew. That's the gun. So that's the navigator's gun. And so he practiced shooting that gun. And he told me about it about every other duck hunt <laughs> out in the blind when we had uh, time to kill. It's our home on Dean Street, Mom and Daddy's home. Aha! The party barge. Mom and Dad in their, their cool swim gear. That boat had a deck 16 by 32 and you could fit 50 people on it. It almost sank when you put 50 people on it. But uh, there was plenty of room for smiles, just like that one. Daddy was an avid fisherman. His mama loved to fish. And Daddy picked that up. So he fished a lot, took us boys fishing and girls, and he took a lot of people fishing. I loved going offshore. Um, a lot of times him and his brother, Char uh, Charlie, would go fishing about four in the afternoon and go to which one of Charlie's favorite honey holes. That was his uh, best friend in New Orleans, Noel Bordelon, he went fishing a lot. So him and Uncle Charlie would go fishing and come back with a huge mess of uh, bass from brother's place. We would go saltwater fishing, so those are a bunch of king mackerel that, that we caught one day. It was a great trip. And fishing was a, a part of our experience, and obviously a part of the boat life. Yeah, he was a pretty good fisherman too. But he was a better duck hunter, and so that's his mud boat. We built that. He built it by hand. He sawed a boat in half and shortened it up, and that's the Mud Lake Hilton out there just north of Holly Beach, Second Bayou Bridge, and uh, that's our camp boat. And so a ton of my memories of Daddy were, uh, were duck hunting. 
out on the mud lake. You can see it from Google Maps or satellite map. You can go find it really easy. And we hunted ducks. And they hunted ducks on the other side of the road. Jerry Donnie went hunting a lot of his kids. And, uh, and then obviously he continued that. And, and me and Bill got to go hunting a ton. And, and it was a lot of fun. That's Bill right there with that awesome smile. And Dad. We made a lot of friendships. That was one of Dad's friends from New Orleans and his son and a great looking speckle belly goose. Some of my best my best memories are, are in the duck blind with Dad. That's Clay right there. Jumpsuit. That's <laughs> smile. So Daddy taught me a lot when we were duck hunting. I learned how to work hard, how to persevere. We did a little bit of deer hunting with his friend Charles Weeks in Texas, Charles and Robert. Mom and Dad went on a ton of trips. We, uh, they took all their trip pictures with slides, and, uh, and that's Daddy's parents right there. And uh, I think get one picture of them in there. But they took all their trips to, to Rome and Tokyo and Mexico and all over the country. That's uh, Dad's sisters and his brother. That's the five children. Daddy is the uh, last surviving, and he's the oldest. And that's him and his awesome bride, Marie, my mama, at her Christmas tree store, which we did in the wintertime at Clay's Marine. Mama made a ton of friends in the Christmas tree business, and uh, that was in 1985, our, our family photo at the tree store. There's my awesome parents our awesome parents. Daddy had his hip replaced three times and so this was the first trip to New Orleans I think at the Tulane or Loyola Medical School and uh, those are the younger three kids and mom and dad at that. So more of those birthday parties. There's Billy Wagster back there and mom and daddy with those awesome smiles and uh, I like that memory. There's me and Bill. That's the party barge again. We, uh, we entertained a lot. I had a paddle wheel on the back. And um, Daddy took the wheel a lot. I remember being in the boat with him for hours and hours. And I was just talking with, with my brothers the other night. I can't remember one mistake that I remember Daddy making. You know, some sort of boating error where he, he, he knew what he was doing on the water. He had a lot of experience. That's their 50th anniversary. Mom and Daddy have been married 62 years. May the 2nd, this year would have made 63. So I'm here to tell you, on behalf of all my brothers and sisters, we love our dad. For daddy, I'm so glad that you're my dad. I'm proud of you at the city gate and everywhere else. That's at their anniversary party. They even put together for them. They renewed their vows. What a smile. What a good looking couple. Thank you, Mom and Dad. We love you. <laughs> I love mom. Look at her. She's so pretty. <laughs> These are some repeat pictures I didn't catch. <laughs> oh, look at my brother Donald on the right. His kids. They're so good. Bill's on the left. That's recently at Eva's house. <laughs> Dad was the life of the party even when he was old. At the home he's been staying in, he would he would be the life of the party when he was in a, having a good day. He would charm everybody. What a beautiful couple. We love you, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs>